One thing I will openly do on this channel is eat my words. I think a lot of college football fans may finally have to do this, as DJ Uyangole has seemingly saved his career. After a pretty disastrous 2021 season, DJ was widely criticized, people were calling for him to be benched, they're talking about how terrible he was and how he threw his NFL hopes away. I cannot imagine what it felt like being in DJ's shoes, but after a slower start to 2022, he has now put it on over the last few weeks and is starting to become that quarterback that Clemson and college football fans thought he could be. At one point, he had Heisman hype and was considered to be a top 10 draft pick. Right now, it seems that DJ Uyangale is back on that path, and in today's video, I want to talk about how he has saved his career, go through his time at Clemson, and how his NFL draft stock is climbing again. But before we get started, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so quickly be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you want to support today's video, let me know a player or a topic I could cover next, and turn on notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's get started and talk about DJ Yui Angalala. In order to understand how DJ got to this point, we first need to go back in time. DJ is of Samoan roots, and his dad was a very well-known person in the California area. He was a bodyguard for the likes of Chris Brown, Rihanna, and DJ Khaled, and with his dad being so huge, he would pass on those genes to his son, DJ, who was one of eight kids. The family was obviously settled in the state of California for his dad's work, and after taking a liking to the quarterback spot in the game of football, DJ was a prized young player in the area. He would arrive in Bellflower, California, and would go to the prestigious St. John Bosco Prep. This is the same school where guys such as Josh Rosen and blue chip recruit Katten Hauser played quarterback. They're also known as one of the top high school football programs in the nation, and when DJ started playing, he was a physical nightmare. As a junior, he would pass for 3,366 yards, 48 touchdowns, and just 7 picks, compared to a 70% completion percentage. He also ran for over 300 yards and 6 touchdowns, while leading the team to a 13-1 record, a state title, and the number 3 overall ranking in high school football. The guy was a winner, a superhuman, and considered elite. Despite still being in high school, Yui Angole wouldn't look at a place at the NFL Combine. He's already physically developed at 6'4 and 240 pounds, and made great strides as a passer during his sophomore season. This was pretty insane, as he was a high school quarterback who looked like a young NFL player. But where would he end up going? The guy was a five-star recruit, and his final three included Clemson, USC, and Oregon. USC was the big-time school in the area who was known for quarterback talent. Oregon was the sexy school that a lot of big West Coast players liked to join, and Clemson was a dominating program on the other side of the country. Everyone kind of knew he was going to go to Clemson, but he'd eventually make it official, choosing the Tigers, saying, quote, There were a lot of reasons why I chose Clemson. Like I've said before, I felt a spiritual connection with the entire coaching staff, especially with Coach Dabo Sweeney when I first visited back in June. DJ was not new to Clemson, though, as his first visit would be for the Dabo Sweeney camp, and Clemson would officially offer him. Not only was he a star football player, but he was also going to try to play baseball at Clemson. He was an MLB prospect as he had a 95 mile per hour fastball, but I guess when you get to college you have to pick one sport, and his future was obviously football. He was a part of a very special Clemson class, and he was a huge deal. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a 5 star talent, the number one pro style quarterback, and the 10th best player in the class of 2020. The only quarterback ranked higher than him was Bryce Young from Matter Day. Nevertheless though, with Trevor Lawrence having one more year before the NFL, his connection with the coaching staff, and time to develop, DJ was seen as the future and the next great quarterback for Clemson football. But it's been quite a journey in his first three years there. Going into his Clemson career, DJ was obviously the backup quarterback, and he would get to learn under Trevor Lawrence. Clemson had high expectations in 2020, and after a hot start, it seemed like Trevor and the Tigers were cruising. That was until the Boston College game. Trevor was not allowed to play for two games because of a positive test, so DJ would have to go in. After a complete scare in the first half against Boston College, DJ would combine for three touchdowns and lead them to a 34-28 victory. The following weekend was going to be a big test though. He'd have to make his first career road start against the number 4 Notre Dame Fighting Irish, and DJ would impress. Despite losing in double overtime, he'd throw for 439 yards and combine for three touchdowns. That was one of the highest passing yard games in Clemson history, and DJ showed that he was going to be a force when he was the full-time starter. Trevor would come back, and DJ would once again become the backup, and wouldn't play until their game against Pittsburgh, as he'd score a touchdown in the ACC Championship game. He'd get a chance to throw one pass against Notre Dame in the college football playoff, and he would finish his freshman season with 914 yards and 9 total touchdowns. Obviously, the hype was going to be unreal for him in 2022, as Trevor was now gone. Throughout the offseason, everyone was talking about Bryce Young and DJ Uyangale. They were two Cali 5 stars, now at big time programs, and they both would have Heisman hype. Not only did he have that kind of hype, but DJ also signed a national ad campaign with Dr. Pepper, and he might have been the most talked about quarterback in the game. 
Everyone pretty much expected that he was going to be a star from the beginning, but this is not what would happen. He would have to earn it. Clemson would open up against Georgia in week one, and in that game, he would struggle. He go 19 of 37 for 178 yards without a touchdown and a pick six. He only completed 51% of his passes and got sacked for minus 22 yards. DJ and Clemson's flaws were on full display in that game, and things would not really get any better. He'd only have one touchdown and one pick against South Carolina State, almost lost to Georgia Tech, and only had 111 yards and a double overtime loss to NC State. Through four games, DJ was playing pretty badly, and it honestly never got better. He didn't have a touchdown against Boston College, barely beat Syracuse on the road, had two interceptions and a loss to Pitt, struggled immensely against Florida State, and had an interception against UConn, Wake Forest, and South Carolina. His only real decent game of the year came against Louisville, as he threw for 220 yards and had three combined touchdowns. They still only won by seven points. Despite having a bad start to the season, Clemson would go on a winning streak and would get selected to play in the cheese it Bowl against Iowa State. In that game, DJ finished the season with one interception and 187 yards and a seven-point victory over the clone. It was a really disappointing year. He threw for 2,246 yards with nine touchdowns and 10 picks. His QBR was only 43.2, and he was by far the most disappointing quarterback in college football. Blaming was going all around. Some said he was overrated, some said he was hurt, some blamed the wide receivers, many blamed the offensive line, some blamed the coaching staff, and some blamed it on everything. Overall, it was a complete mess for DJ and Clemson, which is why it's so fascinating that they still won 10 games. Most programs would celebrate a 10-win season, but for Clemson, they needed to figure it out and figure it out soon. Dabo would immediately sign a big-time recruit coming out of high school by the name of Cade Klubnick. Coming out of Texas, he was bumped up to a five-star recruit, and some believed that he would push DJ for the starting job. There were rumors all spring and summer about how Cade was pushing him for that job, but eventually Dabo came out and said that DJ was his guy. As the 2022 season started, the DJ narrative didn't really change that much. Against a really bad Georgia Tech team, he would struggle in the first half before he would eventually have two touchdowns in their win. Against Furman, he once again wasn't very impressive and things didn't change much against Louisiana Tech. Through his first three games, DJ only had about 650 yards with five total touchdowns against pretty weak competition. Many were wondering if Cade Klubnik was finally gonna start, but last week, we saw a flash of what DJ can be and what he probably will be for the remainder of his Clemson career. He was a star. In what was a huge game against number 21 Wake Forest, the Demon Deacons and the Tigers would go back and forth and DJ would put on a show. He threw for 371 yards with five touchdowns without an interception. He made big throw after big throw and eventually made the game winning play to win in double overtime. This was a huge matchup when it comes to the ACC title race, and DJ completed 64% of his passes and looked insanely confident. After the game, Coach Dabo said, quote, After four games, if you don't recognize this kid's special ability, then you're blind. You just want something else to write about. Hopefully, everybody can tear up all those articles you've written or take some ownership for them at this point. I know my YouTube channel doesn't mean a whole lot, but I definitely have to eat my words with DJ. I was sort of calling for him to be benched for Cade Klubnik, Right now, he has proved me wrong. And honestly, I'm happy about it because DJ is a really good guy. Last year, he only had nine touchdowns and 10 interceptions. And this year, he has 11 total touchdowns with only one interception. While we probably could have put up bigger numbers in those first three games, he's looked a lot different. And he had his coming out party against the best team on the schedule so far. This upcoming weekend, they play against NC State. And this is a top 10 showdown and I'm super pumped for this one. So how has DJ saved his career? Well, one, it came down to his faith. After everything that went on, he said, quote, this is life, man, everybody has problems, but I never questioned God's plan. God led me through a tough time and it wasn't the best, but he led me to the other side. I feel like God did that for a reason to make me a better person and a stronger person. As a very faithful person myself, I always love to hear it and this is what got him through it. It was the root of his journey back, and he never let the media or the world get to him enough to break him down. Now I've come up with five reasons how DJ has changed the game. One, the offensive line. Last year's offensive line was a disaster, and while it may not be as good as years past, it's been a lot better this year, as he has only been sacked six times in four games, compared to constantly getting hit hundreds of times last year, it seemed. Improvement on the offensive line has given him more time and the ability to use his skill. He has better wide receivers. I think last year was the worst year for Clemson wide receivers in probably a decade, as Justin Ross was the best guy on the roster with 46 catches for 514 yards and three scores. Both Bo Collins and Davis Allen also caught a couple touchdowns, but overall, it was extremely disappointing at that position, and it was down compared to years past. This year, though, the team's looking better and more balanced. Bo Collins has 218 yards and four touchdowns. 
true freshman Antonio Williams has been making plays. Joe Nagana has been solid in the tight end pair of Davis Allen and Jake Bringenstool each have two touchdowns and made huge plays against Wake Forest. They now have those five guys and if somehow EJ Williams can get back to his old pace, they'll be even better. Now that he has more time and better guys to throw to, this has contributed to his success. Third, he's no longer injured. Whether you think it had that big of an impact or not, last year he dealt with both a broken finger and a bad knee for much of the season. He finally got time to heal over the offseason, and that contributes to more confidence and more mobility and not being in pain, which obviously helps. Fourth reason, he's now in better shape. Over the offseason, he took time to lose weight and work on his mobility. That has shown a lot more this year as he has more broken tackles, looks a lot more mobile in the pocket, and he can now run a bit faster. Those first five factors are all huge, but the last one is needed for any quarterback to succeed, and that is confidence. Last year, it seemed that DJ's confidence was completely broken, and he needed to figure out a way to block out the noise and get back to how he always was. DJ has been good at all levels of football, and even showed in 2020 that he could do it on the biggest stage. This year, he's been a lot more confident, and this game against Wake Forest might be one of the biggest turning points in his life. Winning a game like that and putting up those kind of numbers only increases your confidence, and now as Clemson heads into a bunch of big games and hopes to get back to the playoff, having his confidence back will be the biggest tool in his pocket. Combine that with his big arm, his great physical traits, his faith, and a good team around him, DJ is setting himself up to have a spectacular end of the season and fulfill his NFL dream. Right now, the one knock on DJ is that he had a bad season last year. If he can have a good season this year, then combined with his physical traits, his good arm, and overall body of work, will put him back in contention to be a future franchise quarterback and a first round pick. I definitely hope that happens, as while I was a critic for a while, I've always been a huge fan of DJ the person, and I cannot wait to see what he does the remainder of the year, and if Clemson will get back. But what do you guys think? If you're a Clemson fan, what do you think of the current quarterback race? Is DJ a future NFL player? And what is your take on the future of the quarterback position at Clemson? Be sure to let me know down below. Let me know what you think of Clemson football moving forwards and give me another player, topic, or situation I can cover in my next video. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace. Oh.